Leading art artificial intelligence companies are currently developing even more radical ideas as Google releases its most powerful AI model to date. The tech giant launched Gemini just last week. The new AI model can understand text as well as images, video, and audio. Google says Gemini is also capable of completing complex tasks in math, physics, and even more. It can understand and even generate high-quality code. Will Knight joins us now. He is a senior writer for Wired. Thanks so much, Will, for chatting with us. He recently wrote a uh, article dealing, <coughs> excuse me, detailing why he feels Gemini is, is quote, the real start of the generative AI boom. Will, take us through this. Why is Gemini so different from the AI technology that's already out there? Sure. Well, I mean, the truth is we don't have all of the details on how Gemini works, just as we don't on on GPT-4, but uh, we do know that it is, it is more powerful than GPT-4, more capable uh, by um, many benchmarks. It's also the first uh, large AI model to be multimodal, as you said, to, to work with images, video, um, and audio from, from the, from the get-go. Um, and the, the idea is that this is going to give new capabilities. Some of the videos they've demonstrated seem to show a model that is much better able to make sense of the visual world. Um, and this is this is a, a key idea that a lot of people in AI have is that to make um, the next leaps in AI, you might need models that have some sort of grounding that actually learn from the real world, just rather than just learning from text, as you know ChatGPT does. Um, so doing something that mimics slightly more what we see in biology. Are we going to keep expecting to see these kinds of leaps forward every so often? We're still getting our arms around uh, ChatGPT. Yeah, I think that's that's actually just the most important question is you know how much this is going to continue, and we it <coughs> seems that we've had this this these advances which have come which have come with much larger models and more data, but that seems to be plateauing somewhat. And so when I talked to the CEO of, of Google DeepMind, Demis Hassabis, he was talking about sort of new ideas that they're going to draw on to try and um, fix some of the problems you think, see with things like ChatGPT to stop them hallucinating, to make them better able to plan, to give them a memory. Um, so taking sort of new ideas and, and folding them in, that's what I think could be very exciting because that could um, take these technologies in fundamentally different ways. So rather than just have new, you know, slight improvements, you could you could see something more powerful. But it is it's not certain at all uh, as yet, you know, how much more the, uh, continued improvements we're going to see. How is this going to affect the average person, someone like me? Is this going to make it easier to find photos on my phone? What are we what are we seeing here? Well. Yeah, I mean, I, I think AI has already done that, right? It's already sort of revolutionized a lot of devices. And we've 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 had this era of, of people freaking out about uh, ChatGPT taking jobs. And it doesn't seem to be doing that so much as just really being being folded into people's workflows. Um, and I think we'll see that, you know, continue as you have these, these more powerful um, tools emerge. I, I, you, you mentioned the phone. And I think one of the things that we'll see with these AI, AI tools is beyond just being chatbots, you'll you'll have them um, revolutionize the way we use computers because the potential there is to have a, a real personal assistant that can you can give set it much more complex tasks. It can go and use the web for you. It can use software for you. Um, and we're really just at the beginning of that, I think. We just have a quick moment. But one of the things that stood out to me here was the idea that this AI can write code. Right. Well, that's that's one of the things that um, these these language models have proven to be really capable of, um, and I believe it, it was somewhat surprising to those who developed them. But they did they do train them on a lot of code, and um, you know, code is is like language. It's something that you can that, that those machines those models can reproduce um, in coherent and useful ways. But it is also you know, as you allude to, one of the most important things here because what you you now have is agents that you can tell them to do something in English, and they can write code. In order to achieve it, they can write a tiny program that goes off and do does that on a computer. And that's pretty fundamentally, um, you know, powerful. Incredible advances. Will Knight, thanks so much for chatting with us. Thank you.